Hello and welcome to LFA's video on changing your FACF tooling. Tooling changes happens in three parts. For a tooling change we will need a 19mm spanner, a 17mm spanner, a 10mm spanner, a 4mm and 5mm allen key, as well as your tooling calibration set. When tightening the bolts and fittings on the machine, we always suggest reading the manual for the recommended tensions. First we need to remove the capsule closing plate. Undo the two bolts at the top and remove. There will also be a small metal plate. Remove this and put it to one side. Next we're going to remove the top section of the tooling. Take your spanner and remove the two bolts shown here. Now take a 5mm allen key and place it in the bolt behind the bottom section of the tooling and undo. This will release the bottom section. Rotate the machine by hand so your next station is in position and repeat the process. When placing your new tooling into place, you need to line up the two holes on the tooling with the pins on the turret. Once in place, take your 5mm allen key and tighten. Ensure it's tight. Take your top section of tooling, ensure the chamfer is facing upwards. Place it under the lip of the turret. Place the bolt and nut through the top and tighten finger tight. Do the same with the other bolt and again tighten finger tight. This is very important, it ensures you're able to still adjust it. Rotate the turret till it's in its next station. Take your two alignment tools and place them into the end slots of the tooling to line up both the top and bottom sections of the tooling. It's important they are in place in the end slots to ensure correct alignment. Then we're able to tighten the top section of the tooling. Do this evenly and in small increments. Whilst doing this, check the alignment tools. They should always be able to drop and spin freely in the slots. Keep doing this until all the bolts are tight. When all the stations have been changed, we can replace our capsule closing plate. We must first place the small metal plate back into place. The capsule closing plate is chamfered along one edge. The edge needs to be over the tooling as seen here. Place the bolts back into place and tighten finger tight first. And then tighten equally with the spanner. Next is part two, the capsule sewing section. Next we need to change the tooling in your capsule sewing section to match up with your new tooling on the main turret. First close the door in the hopper to prevent any further capsules from falling into the sewing section. Next, we first need to remove the hopper from the top. Remove the two bolts at either side with a 5mm allen key. Once removed, lift the hopper upwards and very carefully as not to damage the leading edge of this section as they're very fragile. Now we're going to remove the front section of the capsule sewer by removing the four allen key bolts using a 4mm allen key. As removing this, ensure you take the weight of the front section as it will fall. Remove the two bolts at either side of the teeth section of the capsule sewer. This is to allow you to remove it, place it to one side. We're going to be removing the capsule release pin, which turns the capsules on and off. We suggest marking around the bolts to record their position. The position of this piece is very important to make sure the capsules drop on time. Once this has been done, you can remove the two bolts with your 5mm allen key. This will release the whole piece. Now we're going to remove the panels of the sewer to allow you more access to the bolts inside. There's four screws on both sides of the unit. Remove these and the panels will slide off in one piece.
Now we can remove the two bolts which will release the back teeth and allow you to remove them. Place your new back teeth into place, replace the bolts and tighten the bolts but leave them loose so we're able to adjust them. Slot the front teeth back in and replace the two front bolts. Again, don't tighten all the way up so we're able to tune them. So next we slot our calibration tools in the end slots, ensuring the thicker end is slotted into the holes and make sure there's very little play. We can now fully tighten the front two bolts. Turn the front two bolts in equal increments and checking whilst we do this. Next, manually move the turrets so the back teeth move to the furthest point forward in their cycle, just before they start moving back again. Now we take two capsules and place them into the end slots, making sure the line of the capsule is in line with the front teeth. Also, make sure the two separate teeth are not touching and are equally spaced in front of each other. Now start to tighten the two bolts on top of the back teeth. Do this equally in small increments, whilst checking the two caps making sure they're still aligned whilst doing this. Again, turn the machine turret by hand and listen for squeaking or rubbing sounds. Replace the front section of the capsule sewer by lining that up and replacing the four bolts with your allen key. Like our other pieces, we're not going to fully tighten this section just yet. Next, rotate the machine so the front section drops down into its lowest position. Now look at the gaps along the front to ensure they're equally spaced out and not rubbing or pushing to one side. Again, turn the machine turret by hand and listen for squeaking or rubbing sounds. Now replace the side panels of the capture sewer and replace the bolts. Before we replace the capsule release pin, we need to add some capsules to the capsule sewer. Take your capsules and manually load them into the top. Ensure it's fairly full. Now manually turn the FACF by hand to ensure the capsule sewer is at its highest point. Now reinstall the capsule release pin using the guidelines which you marked on it earlier. Simply line up the lines with your bolts and tighten equally. Once tightened, press your capsule release pin in. When replacing your hopper, we need to be very careful as not to damage the front section when placing it over the top. Gently lower it, ensuring it's central and not rubbing it either side. Then replace the two bolts at either side and again tighten evenly. Test again by turning the manual handle and look and listen for any rubbing or squeaking. Finally open the door of your hopper to allow the capsule to flow through the machine again. Tamping turret. Now we need to change the tooling in the tamping turret. First loosen the bolt on the side of the top section pillar. This will allow you to raise the top part of the machine and you to remove the hopper. Once raised, re-tighten the bolt. Next undo the three bolts on the underside of the top section which will allow you to remove the hopper. 
We suggest two people to do this, ensuring the hopper does not fall. To access the bolt to remove this, we need to remove the sides around the top section. Remove the two bolts at either side, and then the top section should pull away. We now need to remove the auger paddle, so we're able to remove the hopper. Then rotate the top section so it's out of the way. You're then able to lift the hopper out of the machine. We suggest two people to do this. The next task we're doing is removing the sensor. Follow the cable down the center of the tamping turret and pull out the sensor and place it to one side. The next important step is to number the stations. This is to assist us when we're replacing our tooling. Take your spanner and remove the nuts and washers around the top section of the tamping turret. Next we're able to remove the tamping tooling. This can be done in any order. Be very careful with the tips of the tamping tooling as they're fragile. Lay them down gently as not to damage them. Remove the middle casing and the outer casing and place them to one side. Next we're removing this section. On the top is a 19mm bolt. Take a spanner and remove it. Next lift the block up and out. Be very careful with the brass spacer as this is extremely important and set to an exact tolerance. Remove the two 90mm bolts at either side. You'll then be able to remove the whole middle section of the tamping turret. The next section down is secured with four bolts that are 10 millimeters. Take your spanner and remove these. Lift this out and place it to one side. The bottom section of the tamping turret requires a special tool that comes with the FACF. Take this and remove the three 14mm bolts. You're then able to lift and remove this section. While you're in this section of the machine, we suggest cleaning. Whilst the FACF does have a powder that pushes out reject powder, if your powder is fine, it may stick around the edges. Also, it's advisable to check wear around the brass ring. We suggest doing this for every one to two million capsules, especially if your powder is very coarse. Now we start building the tamping turret back up. Start with the bottom section of the tamping turret and reinsert the three bolts and tighten, but leave room so they still play and we can still adjust it. When replacing the next plate, we need to ensure the sensor holder is in the outward facing position. Reinsert the 14mm bolts. These can be fully tightened, but go around and tighten them equally in small increments. Next replace the middle section, make sure the hole is facing the main turret of the machine. Now replace the two 19mm bolts at either side of the middle section. These again can be fully tightened. Now we rotate the machine by hand so the tamping turret is at the lowest point in the cycle. Now take your alignment tools. Place the alignment tools at either end of the station. Now adjust the bottom section until the alignment tools fall into place. Ensure the alignment tools are loose and able to move freely. Now use the special tool that came with your FACF and tighten the bottom section. As always, do this in small increments and equally. Check the alignment tools periodically while doing this to ensure they're still moving freely. If you find the alignment tools are catching and rubbing, simply loosen the bolts at the bottom section, adjust and redo. Now we're replacing the block with our first tamping tool. Whilst doing this, we need to place our brass ring into position. Replace the 90mm bolt into the block through the brass ring, then tighten fully. 
Now replace the middle casing, which will just sit in the groove in the middle of the machine. You're then able to replace the outer casing. The section of the casing without windows needs to be in station 6, or facing the middle of the main turret. The other windows need to be facing stations through 1 to 5. Now we're replacing the tamping tools into the positions they were originally removed from. Whilst doing this, we need to ensure we're being careful with the tips of the tamping tools, as they're fragile. Now we need to replace the washers and nuts on the very top section to secure the tamping tools into place. Then tighten the 17mm nuts on top. These need to be tightened equally in small increments. Next the sensor is placed back through the middle into the slot that was shown earlier. The hopper is lowered gently over the top down through the center section. Keep the auger filler paddle inside the hopper. Now move the auger filler motor back over the top of the hopper. Lift the auger filler paddle out of the hopper and into position. Tighten the bolt at the top of the auger filler paddle. Raise the hopper into position and tighten the bolts to hold it into place. Replace the cover of the auger filler motor and replace the bolts at either side. Now we lower the auger filler motor and hopper back down into position. Partially undo the bolt on the auger filler pillar and gently lower, supporting the weight. Once in position, retighten the bolt. The next step will be tuning the weight of your capsules, which we'll cover in another video. For more information, products and guides, please visit www.lfacapsulefillers.com. Dot com.